Welcome back to another episode of Dive In. Today we've got a good onslaught of future talent coming, coming through. So we've got Henry Baker, who trains out in Dubai at Hamilton Aquatics. He used to be part of the team out here in Muscat, which is how I know him. And he's, he's been doing pretty well this year. And unfortunately, didn't, didn't get to swim any long course, which uh, I think would have been quite exciting. Yeah. Uh, we've got Jacob Whittle down bottom left. You probably heard about him last year. He made quite a bit of a bit of a fuss, um, being the first fourteen-year-old to go sub fifty in the hundred freestyle. We, uh, me and Henry, first sort of met and saw Jacob out at the Middle East Championships last year, where um, he smashed Henry, and Henry was a bit upset about that. Um, yeah. Out of the woodwork, this guy from the Vent Show pulls up, younger than Henry. Oh, we gave him loads of stick about that. <laughs> <laughs> and he, had a good, he had a good summer after that, so uh, he justified beating Henry. And then Mark yeah. is a Scottish, you'll definitely tell he's Scottish based on his accent, a Scottish backstroker. He swam with Jacob at the European Youth Olympic Festival last year. Pretty sure you boys won a medal together in one of the relays? Yeah. Relay. Yeah, I can't remember which relay it was. It's four by one. Well, yeah. Three. Freestyle yeah. relay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a backstroker. How, how, how was your freestyle then? Um, so I think I wasn't meant to be in the freestyle really. And then uh, during the meet, they just said for the heats, we're going to, I don't know who they were resting before uh, nights. I think it was Ed and me and Nick Skelton, who are both backstrokers swam in the heats. And both of us ended up making a team for the final. So it was Jacob, Ed, me and uh, Nick, two backstrokers. A freestyle and probably a fly swimmer uh, won the four by one free, so it's pretty good. So if you weren't there, Henry. You could have probably probably caught yeah. your way to that team. Could have won by the yeah. The emotion there was absolutely ridiculous. Like when, because I, I was on the last leg when I finished, it was like Mark was crying, Nick was crying, <laughs> Ed was like literally like bouncing off the walls. So <laughs> it was crazy. Jacob um, on the last, there was a Russian boy in front of him on the last hundred. And I've never seen somebody have such a big chase down. It was like a lion going after its prey. Jacob just caught up on him and then just stormed in front in the last 15 and touched him. We were ecstatic. It was amazing. How, how come the emotions were high? Was it, was it towards the end of the meet or the beginning of the meet? Or what, what, any more to the story? I think, it was more, I think it was more in the middle, I think. But the, it was like their first medal and my first gold. So I think everyone was just like... And especially because like we was... We weren't doing too well that day, I don't think, either. Uh, so it was just it was just crazy, really. So that, that sort of brings me on to the first thing I wanted to talk about. I, I wanted to sort of say, like, how old are you boys all to start with? Henry, you're 16 still? Yeah. You're 15, yeah, 16, yeah. 17 in a week. You're 15 still, right, Jacob? Yeah, yeah, I'm still 15. And Mark? I'm 16, turn 17 next month. So you're, yeah, so 16 and 15. So boy, you boys are fairly young and... I'm, I'm guessing you both, all three of you sacrificed quite a bit to swim. Just, just on average, how many hours a week are you training? You know, everything combined. I'm about around 18 hours in the pool-ish. Oh um, and then four hours in the gym. Yeah. 16 in the pool, four gym, yoga, all that stuff as well. I don't know how much I would add up to, but yeah. Oh, I do about 17, 18 hours in the pool and then... Like four or five hours in the gym, like yoga as well. Yeah. So all all these all you boys are doing a lot of stuff, but what would you say is like the best thing that you've got out of having put all that work in? It doesn't have to be saying like I won a medal or some a PB. So an experience that swimming has provided you that sort of justifies everything you do and makes it all worthwhile. I think mine's like I've got to like kind of travel parts of the world to like places that I would have never have gone. Uh, on holiday or anything like that just I get to see and meet a lot of people that I wouldn't have met if I wasn't swimming at the level that I was um, and it, it's like great to meet people from all the different countries uh, and just explore their different ways of life and ways of training uh, so that's kind of the like the best thing about all the training in my opinion really. I can say the same thing like I'm not swimming anywhere near any of you boys' level, but the fact that I'm out here in Amman right now and got to meet all sorts of crazy people, it, you don't have to even be the best swimmer to, to get some awesome experiences out of this sport. 
So absolutely, that's a, that's a great, great point. Henry, don't uh, say you met your girlfriend. That doesn't count, mate. I wasn't going to. No, I was, I was going to say, I just feel like, like since I started swimming, because I started quite at an older age, I started three and a half years ago about, and I feel like just, I feel more physically able to do like anything that I wanted to do. Like whereas back before I might have like struggled to do quite a lot of stuff, but now I feel like I'm more physically able to do more stuff and I can challenge myself much better than before. And swimming's helped me, helped me with that a lot. And I definitely feel a lot better, like as a person in my general life, just because it's swimming. But you still can't do a single leg squat. <laughs> Can yeah. You, can you do a regular squat? Yeah. For those who don't know, Henry can't actually squat without his heels coming off the floor. No, I can now. I've been working on it with Kathy, with our coach, and I can now squat, but it's, yeah, it's, it's been a challenge, but I definitely can now. These are positive. I can squat, I can, I can squat 110, 120. Uh, we don't need to get all big, big and, big and, big and just, mighty here, mate. Just, just, just say. Don't need to start throwing down numbers. <laughs> Something swimming's brought me is probably like the ability to compete. Like I was always quite a jumpy child. I was always doing everything I could, any sport I could, any any activity. And I think just the the ability to sort of put that into one thing and be able to compete with it and like trying to get better than your friends or trying to get better than someone in a different country or trying to just be the best you can I think that's that's something that's really stuck with me in swimming I think that's probably the best thing I could ever say about it the ability to compete yeah I agree I, I, I yeah com compete is the best feeling ever still to this day and so so you boys are all achieving you know to a high stand but what would you say if you could pick one thing that really has changed your ability to, to perform or something one mindset thing or one thing you started doing in training or one thing you started doing outside the pool that really took you from one level and, and, and took it up a gear if, if there is anything that there might not be maybe it was just always a steady progression but one thing that you really think stood out last year it would have been quite easy for me to like lose my lose my head last year so I feel like I, I've learned the ability to kind of keep grounded and not get ahead of myself or not um if something goes bad not get too down about it but if something goes well don't get too uh, over excited about it because you you lose too much energy if you get excited over excited but then you you'll swim worse in your next race if you get too down about it so i think over time i've learned learned about that um and that's kind of one of the best things that i feel i can do for onlookers maybe watching your last season every meet you sort of got faster so from, from from my perspective you've gone 51 then you've gone 50 then you've gone 49 you've won this you've won this so from, from how it probably looked to a lot of people out there everything was going well anyway so maybe behind the scenes what would you say things that you did have to overcome I, not necessarily in training I pretty much hit like the same times every all the time so I I never normally a great summer to judge whether or not oh, I'm going to have a great meet next or uh, I'm going to have a bad meet. It's more in the warm up. I used to be kind of I always used to think oh my times aren't quite on on track in the warm up, so I'm not going to have a good swim. So I think like they're they're the, the moments in the warm up where you think it doesn't matter, just rest, uh, do a good pre pull and just hit the race um, and and surprisingly like at European juniors uh, I wasn't feeling great in many of the warm-ups at all uh, but I still managed to get into the pool and do uh, good swims so I feel like they're the they're the moments where you just need to think yeah I can I can do it and it doesn't matter that I'm not on times in the in the warm-ups if you feel good great if you don't feel good you can still do a great swim no matter what so that's one of the things yeah it's good I like that yeah too right I moved to club when I was younger to City Glasgow, which is my home club now. Um, but I was at quite a small club, and I think sort of surrounding yourself with people that want to do better and want to be better, I think that makes such a difference when you're training. And like it's the everyday thing where if people want to get better, you want to be better than them, and it just it's a cycle. And I think that's something that went when I was out of EOF. There was 
what, eight of us and for the swimmers. But there was loads from different sports and they all wanted to do well. And having that sort of atmosphere with people, it, it does change it. And I took a lot back from that for next season. Well, this season, um, is, I've kind of been myth that it's cut short. But um, surround yourself with people that, that want to achieve. I think that sort of has built me up a lot. I don't always rely on other people. I obviously have to rely on myself for individual races and stuff like that. But having a good group of people around you definitely helps. I think, I think you can relate to that as well, can't you, Henry? I, I certainly can. Yeah, yeah, I definitely can. I definitely feel like the more motivated people are, the better you do as a person because it just the atmosphere in the like in the poolside or and anything is just much higher than when it's let down. But I, I also think one of the things that helped me in swimming was team change. When I changed to Hamilton, the the intensity and the capacity went up by quite a lot. To start with, it might have been a bit too quick because I did get an injury uh, towards the start, but I've recovered from that now and I'm back to normal. And I feel like the capacity change and the intensity change definitely helped me get to where I am now. I, I also was in a similar boat. I think I was 14 when I moved from a smaller club to where I trained for the majority of my career. And just, just being held responsible and accountable for my actions on a daily basis. Like I remember at my, my, the club I was at previously, like we used to just every session, if there was backstroke, we went and sat in the showers. And even if our coach walked in the showers, they'd literally just go to us like, come on boys, come back in the pool. And we'd be like, yeah, give us a minute. Like, I'm not even exaggerating how ridiculous that sounds. And like, if any, if any of my students ever said that to me, oh my God, I would, hell would break loose. Not that they can go, to, this is not a you know, scenario that could arise in any of my training sessions, but like, and all of a sudden, the thing is, I, I went to an atmosphere that I wouldn't have tried that because no one else would, and you'd be frowned upon by your peers more than your coaches. And I, I think when you can get in that environment, that's the more important thing, not, not doing something because your coach says you can't do it, but not doing something because you don't want to look like someone who doesn't try or doesn't care to your teammates. And I think when your teammates start making you accountable, that's when it really sort of steps up again. Uh, Jacob, have you always saw at Deventio or was you anywhere else before? Uh, I, before, when I was like um, about nine, uh, I moved to Deventio. Um, so before that, I was swimming at just like a local club. But then after that, I got asked to go to Deventio, and since then I've been on that team. Um, but it was kind of the local club. The the mindset is always like in all clubs around the same area. The mindset was always uh, I want to get into Deventio, or I want to go and because everyone wore from Deventio, they used to wear like a gold hat, and it, I don't know why, but it just used to be a thing that everyone wanted to wear a gold hat. Um, so everyone like from all the local clubs like fighting to go and get one of these gold hats so it was like a great environment and a great target that we could all set ourselves like try and get to the venture and get into that that club because uh, everyone saw that as like the elite squad so that that was like one of the things that pushed me on a lot uh, like all my teammates were all fighting to get this like gold hat and then since then I've been at the venture so so um, I, I want to go from positive to, to not so much negative, but if you boys could say there's one thing that you could not do and still be successful at swimming, so any part of your training or your routine that you, you have to do, you know you have to do, but you could strip out, be it land work, be it a certain type of set, be it the diet, you know, eating clean, what would you take away if you could take away one part of your, your swimming training? Be honest here. Distance. Um, this yeah. <laughs> the, the, long, the long boring sets that you just yeah. do, 8, 9k, just straight, those sets. Yeah. I mean, looking at your times, Mark, you definitely need the longer stuff. I'm pretty sure you go 25 0 for 50 and 55 6 for 100 back. I looked at yeah. your time and I was like, that's not okay. How can you go 25 0 and 55 6? You can't be doing any yeah. distance, mate. No. <laughs> I think um, when it comes to the distance stuff, I think something I definitely need to take into next season was not being able to like switch not switch off but like not concentrate as much on the the less intensity and the less 
the like less rest sort of aerobic stuff I think I really need to work on that because I can't swim a 200 I need to swim a 200 the distance stuff if I could take it out and I, would, I could still swim a 200 400 and 800 whatever I wanted on the day I would but you can't so back to the pool so are you anything different or are you join the boys and um, you get rid of the distance the volume it's not one of my strongest points certainly not but sometimes I do enjoy just going to the pool and just especially if I'm in like a bad mood or if somebody's wound me up or anything like that uh, I don't mind distance because I can just swim up and down and just think about things or just switch off completely and just concentrate on the aerobic kind of side of things so distance an all right thing for me um, it's not my favorite but it's it's all right so I think if I could get rid of one thing it's in gym, my uh, SNC coach uh, always hammers me about the balance, and I always have to do uh, five or six exercises about balance. And obviously, I'm I'm a big lad, uh, and a balance is not not the easiest thing. So I have to do all these things like on one leg. Um, and if I could get rid of that, I would <laughs> I would certainly do it because I'm I'm not great at balancing at all. Fair enough. The balance aspect. <laughs> Important nonetheless, because I, th I think with a lot of single leg and, and, and balanced movements, what, what happens is your core engages, so more muscles are firing and, and everything turns on. So what, what, did you find core exercises difficult as well, or do you find you have a particularly strong core? Yeah, so I've, I've had a lot of injury around. Um, I had an injury on my right rib, an injury on my left rib, uh, and just keep getting pain around my ribs. So I keep having to do... Uh, lots of exercises on my core and we found that my core is not very strong uh, so that's one of the reasons why I'm not great at balancing so it's all kind of linked into one I have to do my balance I have to do my core um, and then rehab around the ribs uh, my back to kind of engage the core it's all kind of the same thing and it's all what I'm hammering at the minute but it's one of the things that you do so much that it just winds you up some days <laughs> absolutely yeah um... All I wanted to get at really there was if anyone sort of your age or a little bit younger is watching, that even some of the guys that are the best in this age group, you know, in the UK right now, there's stuff in swimming that you hate. We, we all hate certain aspects of it and we get on with it. You get on with it, you take it on your chin and you, you appreciate that, be it so like swimming up and down for, for a long period of time, you might hate it or you might find it therapeutic. You know, it's, it. you know it's needed. What, at what point during your swimming did you did you sort of switch and go? This is what I want to do, you know, for the rest of my life. This is what I want to make, you know, a career out of. If you, if you if you think that way, anyway. I think for me, one of, one of the older lads who always used to give me a lift. He won't know this at all, but he always used to give me a lift from my house to the pool because my mum and dad used to work all the time and I couldn't couldn't get. So when I was like eleven and twelve, he used to give me a lift to the pool, and this lad he was like it was great it was a great swimmer he was a fly swimmer but I always used to watch him and he was from the same uh, home club as me so I've been watching him for a long time and he always used to come back and do like you always have it where the coach says oh, watch watch this swimmer do a turn or watch this swimmer do like watch the length of the stroke or something he was always the guy that Glenn is my coach he said he was always the guy that said, "Oh, Jamie, can you can you show an example of this?" And ever since then, I'd always like looked up to this guy, uh, even though he'd not got like the best reputation. He wasn't no Olympian or anything like that. I just always looked up to him. And when I was about twelve or thirteen, I got to swim in the same squad as him, and that really drived me. And I just thought, I want to be like him. I want to do this all the time. So I think that kind of just switched uh, switched my mind a little bit. I don't know why. But I just admired him completely, um, and I just thought it was amazing. So that's the that's the thing that kind of changed my mindset. That's, that's a good one. I like that, and it just shows if you are in a swimming club and in an environment, even if you don't see yourself as someone who's going to you know achieve at great heights, you can still be a role model and create inspiration to someone in the younger squads, and and, and really turn their life and set their life on a path that that could be completely different. So. Yeah, anyone yeah. can take, take that leadership role and, and, and inspire some of the younger guys. It's really important, I think. I've seen some really bad 
uh, role models in swimming clubs. And I think it's important when you are at the upper end and you, you are sort of um, dealing with younger ones and, and, and training with younger ones that you set a, a positive role model every day, every day, every session. And that'll make you better as well. Uh, I think I started properly like racing and like swimming was when my coach, Stu, my first coach, that I uh, told me that I was pretty fast. That's what he said to me. And then he moved me up. He gave me one session a week with the, the top squad in my swim squad that I had. And uh, I walked up and I beat every single one of them. And everything we did, I beat them in all of it. And I just was like, this is, this is my thing. And I just kept on doing that. And then also my coach swam. And so it was nice swimming. And I always looked up to him and I was like, I always want to beat him one day. And then, and then Sonny also came along and I also wanted to be him, still do want to be him in our races when we race each other. And I obviously have overtaken Stu and I'm overtaking uh, in most, most of the events. All right, well, thanks ever so much for coming on, boys. I think this, was, this, was, this will be uh, definitely interesting to some, some of the younger viewers. And hopefully um, we'll see all three of you back in the pool soon. And achieving bigger and greater things. I, I, think, I think we've got three exciting prospects here. So sooner rather than later, make, make your names known. But No, I'm all good. Thank you for letting us come on. Thank you. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, thanks. Cheers, guys. Cheers.